Okay, in this video we're going to look at the quotient property of exponents. This is page one. Here's page two. And there's page three. And by page four, um, watch out for the ones where you have one over ten squared, one over x to the negative three, and such. Okay, that's on page four. So, starting with page one. 2 to the power of 7 over 2 to the power of 4. Let's calculate this um, with a long way. 2 to the power of 7 is 2 times itself 7 times, isn't it? It's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 and then times 2 again. 2 to the power of 4 is 2 times itself 4 times, so that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And if I'm multiplying all the way along the top of a fraction and all, and all the way along the bottom, then I can cross cancel, okay, and I'm left with 2 times 2 times 2 on the top, and then times 1 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 times 1, so this entire fraction becomes 2 times 2 times 2 times 1 times 1 times 1, that's 2 cubed all over 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, all over 1, which of course is 2 cubed, right? Now, that was one way of doing it, but think about it this way. We had 7 on the top, 4 on the bottom. 4 of them crossed out, so we're left with 3. So we could have just went, well, 7 take away 4 is 3. So the answer is 2 cubed. 7 minus 4 is 3, right? Similarly, if you had x to the power of 4 over x to the power of 3, if you expand these out, factor these out, x to the power of 4 becomes x times x times x times x, four times, all over. x cubed is x times x times x, three times. So we have four x's on the top, three x's on the bottom, and we can cross-cancel common factors. These x's cross-cancel, these x's can cross-cancel, and just for fun, I'll cross-cancel this one with this one just to show you you can do that too. Now on the top I have 1 times x times 1 times 1, so on the top I just have x times a bunch of 1, so x. On the bottom I have 1 times 1 times 1, I have 1. So this becomes x over 1 or x. Okay. Now, um, so once again though, we had x to the power of 4 on the top and x cubed on the bottom, that means, um, you know, three x's out of the top are going to cross cancel with three in the bottom, so I'll be left with one on the top. So I could have done it this way. I could have said, well, that's just the same thing as x to the power of four minus three, which, of course, is x to the power of one. And, of course, that's what our answer was, because x is x to the power of one. It's the same thing. So we could have just went 4 minus 3. And the last one, of course, we could have went 2 to the power of 7 minus 4, which, of course, would be 2 cubed. And the answer was, of course, 2 cubed. Okay. The only question is, what if we have um, a bigger number on the bottom than the top? So a higher exponent on the bottom, for example. Well, in this case, it would be 2 to the power of 4 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 4 2 is multiplied all over. 2 to the power of 7 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 2 is multiplied on the bottom. And now what happens when we cross cancel? These 2's cross cancel and they make 1's. These 2's can cross cancel and make 1's. And these 2's cross cancel and make 1's. These 2's cross cancel and make 1's. So we have... Um, 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, all the way in the top, so that's 1 on the top and on the bottom. 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Times two. 3 2, so that's 3 2's multiplied at the bottom, that's 2 cubed. So I get 1 over 2 cubed, okay? Now we should remember from earlier that 1 over 2 cubed is the same thing as 2 to the power of negative. Do you remember what that is, 2 to the power of negative? 3, okay? And I could have gotten this answer if I just went um, to the, or let do just went like oh, like all the other ones. Two to the power of four of two to the power of seven is two to the power of the top exponent minus the bottom one. Two to the power of four minus seven, which would have given me two to the power of four take away seven. You have four dollars. You take seven away. You're now in debt by 
3. So 2 to the power of negative 3. And that's what I found the long way around as well. Factoring them out, I found 2 to the power of negative 3. So we should um, understand and believe that a to the power of m over a to the power of n would equal a to the power of, can you guess it? Well, 2 to the 7 over 2 to the 4 is 2 to the 7 minus 4. This is x to the 4 minus 3. This is 2 to the, you know, it's the top exponent minus the bottom exponent. So it's the m minus the n. a to the power of m minus n. And that is the quotient property of exponents. It's a to the power of m or a to the n is a to the power of m minus n. Okay? So on to page two and let's try these examples using our new property that we discovered which is a to the power of m over a to the power of n is a to the power of m minus n. So if you had five to the power of ten over five to the power of fourteen using the new uh, property, I'll put it here you could simply write that as 5 to the power of 10, the top exponent, minus the bottom exponent. 10 minus 14, okay? And that, of course, gives us 5 to the power of $10. Take away $14 is negative 4, okay? And you're done. You can just leave your answer like that. Uh, similarly, if you had 7 to the power of negative 3 all over 7 squared, you could simply write that as 7 to the power of the top exponent minus the bottom exponent. So it will be negative 3 and then a minus minus 2, right? So it's negative 3 minus 2, which is, of course, you have negative $3. You take away 2. Now you're in debt more. You're in debt by 5, right? Negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. And you can just leave your answer like that. So you try this one. Uh, y to the power of negative 1 over y cubed. What would that be? So press pause and try that. Now I'll try it. How about y to the power of negative 1 minus 3? Okay which is, of course, y to the power of negative 4, and we're done there. So the question is, where does this red, where does this minus sign come from? You know, we start with a negative 1 and a positive 3, and all of a sudden we have another uh, negative sign appearing out of nowhere. Well, it comes from the rule. If you're dividing by the same base, it has to be the same base, like a is the, is the base on top and bottom here. Um, then you subtract the exponents, the top one minus the bottom one, and that's where that minus comes from. But when you divide by the same base, you, you subtract the top exponent minus the bottom one, okay? So what if we had x to the power of negative 3 over x to the power of negative 2, okay? In this case, we have a negative on the top and a negative on the bottom. And remember, it's, x, it's, the, it's, it's going to be you're dividing by the same base, which is x, and it's going to be x to the power of the top exponent minus the bottom exponent. Now, be careful with these ones because the bottom exponent is negative 2. So we actually have negative 3 minus negative 2. You have a double negative here. We have to watch out for that. Okay. Now, a double negative, we should know, is the same thing as plus plus. So that is negative 3 plus positive 2, which is x to the power of negative 1. And you can leave your answer like that again. All right? Now, on to um, page 3. If we had, so, so uh, let's see. You can press pause and try this one yourself. a to the power of negative 8 over a to the power of negative 1. Okay? Now you're dividing. You're dividing. So... You need to use the quotient rule, so it's going to be a to the power of the top exponent, which is negative 8, and then what happens? A minus sign appears, doesn't it, out of nowhere, because we're dividing. When we divide by the same base, we make this new negative subtract sign, so it's negative 8 minus negative 1, which of course is 
And don't forget that negative negative makes plus plus, so that's negative 8 plus 1, a to the power of negative 7, and you can just leave your answer like that, okay? Um, so there we go. Now, here's the brain buster, 2 over 2 to the power of negative 3. How do you do that one? And you use the same property, by the way. 2 over 2 to the power of negative 3. Can you guess? There's no exponent on the 2. Can we put an exponent on the 2 so that this is the same? So we don't change anything, but we can write it another way with an exponent. 2 is the same as, well, 2 to the power of 1. What's 2 to the power of 1? That's 2, right? So similarly, 2 can be written as 2 to the power of 1, can't it? Or, for example, 5 can be written as 5 to the power of 1, right? And so on. So this 2 can be written as 2 to the power of 1. So we have 2 to the power of 1 over 2 to the negative 3. What does that give us? We're dividing by the same base. So we go 2 to the power of the top exponent, which is 1, minus, minus 3 or minus negative 3? Minus negative 3. Yep. And negative negative, as we know, makes plus plus. Now, of course, you can put in parentheses to separate the signs, if you like, on all of these. We could put in parentheses. But in any case, we should get plus plus. So this gives us 2 to the power of 1 plus positive 3 to the power of 4. And you can just leave your answer like that. You don't have to calculate it. Although this is, of course, 16, right? But you can just leave that as 2 to the power of uh, negative of uh, 2 to the power of positive 4. Okay, so press pause and try this one. x to the power of negative 2 over x over x. What is that? Press pause and try that. Okay, I'm going to try it now. I'm going to do it now. So it's going to be you're dividing by the same base. So that's and oh, we don't have an exponent on the bottom here. But I mean, we know that, for example, a to the power of 1 is equal to a. In other words, a can be written as a to the power of 1. Or y can be written as y to the power of 1. So we could write this thing as x to the power of negative 2 over x to the power of 1, because that's the same thing as x. And then using the quotient rule, that's x to the power of the top exponent, negative 2. We're dividing by the same base, so x to the power of negative 2 minus... 1, which of course is x to the power of, in debt $2, subtract 1, in debt $3, negative 3, right? Now, just to remind yourself, what are these powers? 5 to the power of 0, x to the power of 0, 3 to the power of 0, do you remember those? 5 to the power of 0 is actually 5 over 5, which of course is the number 1. x to the power of 0 is simply x over x, which of course gives you the number 1. 3 to the power of 0 is also 1, right? So a to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So these are all 1, okay? So in other words, what we might want to do is write 1. Sometimes you might want to write 1 as a to the power of 0. Or you might want to write 1 as 8 to the power of 0. Or you might want to write the number 1 as x to the power of 0, depending on the math problem you're doing. So. With that knowledge, let's have a look at page um, 4. 1 over 10 squared. Weird. How do we figure this one out? We can figure it out with the quotient property again. Okay? 1 can be written as 10 to the power of 0. Yep. And on the bottom, we have 10 squared. So this whole thing becomes, using the quotient property, 10 to the power of 0 minus 2, which of course is 10 to the power of 0. You have $0. You take away 2. Now you're in debt by 2. So 10 to the power of negative 2. And of course, we might remember this from our introduction that 10 to the negative 2 is simply 1 over 10 squared, right? 
But what about this guy? 1 over x to the power of negative 3. How do you do him? Well, you've got a 1. We can use a quotient property, but the quotient property only works when you have the same base on the top and bottom. So sometimes we actually need to create this situation where we have the same base in the top and bottom. And 1 is, another way to write 1 is x to the power of 0. Remember that? And on the bottom we have, of course, x to the power of negative 3. So using the quotient property, this becomes x to the power of the top minus the bottom. 0 minus, and on the bottom, we don't have 3, we have negative 3. So it's 0 minus negative 3, which gives us negative negative makes plus plus. 0 plus 3, that's simply x cubed, and that you can leave your answer like that. Okay, so press pause on the video and do this one yourself, and then I'll do it. Okay, so the number 1 can be written with this as b to the power of something so that we can then use the quotient property. Now, 1, b to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So 1 can be written as b to the power of 0. And it's useful to do that in this case, because now we have b to the 0 over b to the negative 5. So using the quotient property, that's b to the power of the top number 0 minus the bottom number, which is a negative 5. And z negative negative makes plus plus, so that's b to the power of 0 and 5, b to the power of positive 5. Okay.